Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is fur bear biologist Stephanie Tucker. Steph, all the rules and regulations are set for this upcoming season. Any major changes? There's nothing real major, I would say, but there are some pretty, um, pretty noticeable changes for those people that are hunters or trappers out there, fur bears, probably. Uh, the biggest one I'd point out is there is a slight increase in the river otter harvest limit. So we have an overall season harvest limit this year of 20, which is up from, from 15 last year. So it was increased by five river otters. Okay, and this is the third year of the season? Right. We opened the season three years ago. Um, we're starting out pretty conservative with the river otter season until we get a better handle on what's going on with the population and start collecting some of that harvest data that we use to monitor trends and it is a trapping only season to remind folks and that it's one river otter per trapper and if you get a, a river otter during the trapping season be sure and call your local game warden or department field office and report it you have 12 hours to report it so that we can get it um, counted towards the harvest limit okay let's move on to fishers a little bit of a change there too right exactly so fishers have been slowly expanding a little bit more westward in the state traditionally they're in the eastern third of the state which is where our season for fishers has been in the past, just the eastern third of the state, but we've documented some fishers expansion uh, into more central North Dakota, and so we want to allow some opportunity there uh, for trappers as well. And so we've expanded the fisher open area of the state where fishers can be trapped to pretty much statewide except for Botano and Rolette counties. So up in the Turtle Mountains, which is Botano and Rolette counties, we also have American Martin, and those are very susceptible to fisher trapping and so we don't want people to catch martin while they're trapping for fisher so we're going to keep those two counties closed but the rest of the state will now be open for fisher trappers okay something new that came out of the legislature this year was nighttime hunting what were the changes there? right so um some of the equipment regulations what people could and couldn't use for night hunting of things like fox and coyote primarily uh, we're in state law and so at this last legislative session there were some changes introduced and probably the most noticeable is people will now be able to use infrared lights uh, and those are typically a piece of equipment that's associated with night vision to enhance night vision capabilities and so in the past um, night hunters could use night vision but they weren't allowed to use the infrared lights that came with a lot of night vision equipment and so the regulation changed that now you can use the infrared lights with your night vision equipment as well as uh, red or green colored lights, just regular lights that might be mounted on, you know, that you're handheld or mounted on, on your firearm for spotting coyotes or fox at night, as well as during the night hunting seasons for beavers and raccoons. So this, these equipment expansions um, include only for the night hunting seasons, and we have night hunting seasons for fox and coyote, as well as beaver and raccoons. So be sure to check the guide or the proclamation to see when those seasons are. Okay, let's move on to one of your more popular fur bear, the coyote. Right, coyotes have been extremely popular with fur harvesters the last couple of years because the prices have been pretty good. There's a, quite the fur market for coyotes still the last few years and, and most of those coyote pelts are getting bought up by the garment industry for tr trim trade, what they call the trim trade, which is trim on parka hoods and things like that. And that has really kept that market strong and a lot of interest. In North Dakota, that's our probably one of our top two uh, fur bearers besides muskrats. And but with that pressure, the pressure of the last couple of years with lots of people going after coyotes means coyote population trends have started to level off or come down. And so I think trappers and hunters can expect, um, if not a little bit lower, for sure not an increase in coyotes probably in most of the state, similar to last year, if not a little bit lower in most regions of the state. Something we hear a lot about, Steph, are mountain lions. How are the populations right. mountain the, lions? The trends for mountain lions that we've been monitoring indicate that the population has leveled off for the last several years. So there'll be no changes to the hunting regulations or seasons for mountain lions this year. It's still an overall harvest limit in zone one of 15 mountain lions. Last year there was 10 or 11 mountain lions taken in zone one. And then we have zone two, which is the rest of the state, not traditionally mountain lion habitat, but every once in a while mountain lions wander out of uh, other areas of either North Dakota or South Dakota and are, are located in zone two and we have a hunting season there as well. Uh, one thing that uh, is interesting about, that we learned about our mountain lions in zone two this year is we decided with the last couple of years, we've had more than normal number of mountain lions that were harvested by hunters in zone two. And, 
and a handful of confirmed reports of mountain lions in areas like central North Dakota or eastern North Dakota, things like that. And so um, we wanted to find out if those are mountain lions are coming from our population in the Badlands or coming from another population such as Mo eastern Montana or the South Dakota Black Hills. And so we sent off genetic testing to a lab to determine the population assignment for those mountain lions that are taken in zone two. And, and interestingly enough, um, not that it's maybe a total surprise to some people, but most of the mountain lions that are harvested in zone two actually come from the South Dakota Black Hills. They're not produced from our population. Um, and so these are long distance dispersers coming out of South Dakota. South Dakota has a quite a bit bigger population than we do with mountain lions. And so it's, it's understandable that they kick out more sub-adult dispersers. Um, and when I say sub-adult, these are mountain lions that are pretty much full grown, um, but they're getting to the point where they're getting ready to breed and they want to go establish their own territory. So they need to go away from home and go set up their own territory somewhere. And so they take off wandering. And it's just this natural ingrained desire for them to disperse at a certain age, especially for male mountain lions. And they can wander a long distance and, and we get a lot of those coming up from South Dakota as well as a few from Montana. Okay, something we've never talked about during mm -hmm. our webcast on fur bears black bears right yeah so the last several years uh, well at least for the last decade we we've been documenting anywhere from six to eight black bears for sure in the state every summer spring summer fall um, in the last couple of years it seems to be on the increase a little bit and so we're more in the neighborhood of 10 to 12 black bears that we know are for sure in the state and maybe there's several others that we don't know of of course black bears are pretty conspicuous a uh, big black animal out on the prairie sometimes has a tendency to stick out especially before the crops get high and so we just want to you know make people aware that black bears do wander into the state typically the eastern third of the state coming out of minnesota or the north central and northwestern part of the state coming out of saskatchewan seems to be the areas of the state they typically show up uh, if people see black bears please let us know you know snap a picture with your cell phone uh, to confirm that sighting we like to keep track of them you know and especially when one wanders into the state where it moves through and things like that you know black bears do have a tendency sometimes to get into conflicts with humans they're really just wandering around following their nose and so all they think about all day long is food and there's lots of ways that can get them in, into conflict with humans things like you know pet food left outside or garbage left out in the yard you know deer feeders bird feeders even things like beehives and stuff like that that they like to get into when they're when they're looking for food and so um, make sure that people that know that that can happen that bears do wander in the state they do get into conflict sometime in the state and to let us know if they see one we have a lot of good information on our website when hunting and trapping fur bears Absolutely. You know, besides our fur harvester education classes that are offered sometimes in different areas of the state, um, that, that education manual about harvesting fur, har fur bears is available on our website for download to anybody who wants to read it, um, as well as information about the species and the traps. Another thing I would, you know, if people are interested in learning about traps and the best traps to use to catch fur bears is Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies makes available best management practices. For trapping each of the species of fur bears and so that's available on their website as well and then they've tested hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of traps um, to see about their efficacy their reliability their safety and their humaneness for trapping all the various fur bears so besides our website which includes some of that information i would also you know recommend that people maybe check out afwa's website a lot of great information thanks steph okay. like steph just mentioned for more information on hunting and trapping fur bears in north dakota go to the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For fur bear biologist Stephanie Tucker and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.